So here's a checklist of tools and resources which you need to have your wonderful web-based database applications. And uh, those tools and resources have already been discussed in detail in the prior modules. So you have sufficient uh, knowledge and understanding to make that selection. Now there is a kind of a, a contradiction over here that you have to make that selection sequentially also and simultaneously also. Okay, and that will have a profound impact. Okay, on the future of your web based database application profound impact remember, because once you make those selections, it would be difficult and expensive and painful to uh, disassociate those things to undo them. Okay. And the good thing, of course, is that it has to be done only once. It, it, it only once. So uh, we have spoken about in a lot of detail about the ISP, about the web server, application server, about the database, about the FTP, about the email, which we'll be covering in this module. So I will be uh, uh, addressing these things from a point of view of making the selection and their profound impact on the future of your application. So that is the point. So I would again suggest you to look at the notes, read the notes, read the textbooks and raise the queries. So ISP and the web server, now selecting hardware, software and the ISP. Now remember one thing that uh, usually it is not your choice to make a selection of the hardware and software. Okay, whatever the ISP offers, you, you go with it. Unless you are spending a lot of money, depending upon the scope and the nature of your organization and you are making that selection. Of course, then you can do all of those things. Database must be compatible with the web server used. Okay. For example, uh, you have to, be, if, if your backend database is Microsoft Access, you have to ensure that this database is going to run on which operating system. It's not that you develop your application and when you're going to host it, uh, it doesn't support. The operating system doesn't support it. Compatibility with the op application server, if run on the web server, okay? They have to be compatible. Otherwise, it will not run. The things which are running at your end, they have to run when you host them also. And, and I have spoken in a lot of detail about the benefits of the type of domain name and the domain itself, uh, which you know. Now the point over here is that you should get your domain name because your domain name stays with you. Why? Because if you change your ISP that and you are using the domain name provided by the ISP, it changes. Or if you don't change the ISP, but the ISP makes configuration changes, then your domain name may change and it would result in expensive reprinting of stationery. Stationery, your letter pairs, your visiting cards and other stuff. Of course, you can do it quickly on your website, but the hard, but the hardware things, they, they will cost money. They will take time. So get your domain name. About the application server, interface between the web server and your database. I have shown you all those diagrams which you can consult with them. So it is very critical and it has to be compatible with everything. Okay, now if you make this choice once and you need to move your application to somewhere else and they are not compatible, then you're in a problem. Or say for example, you have made this choice and you make a change in your say database and it is not supported, you have a problem. So you have to port things which is expensive and painful. Carefully select package, including the database and the application server. You have to ensure their compatibility. You have to think ahead. Okay, you have to think ahead that what could happen. So this 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 module is uh, prompting you, is is prompting you to think about those future scenarios, about the database transportability of database. That database should be transportable. Okay, the definition of the database should be transportable. Because defining the database takes a lot of time, effort, energy, and resources. That, uh, for example, you t about the about the scripts and the processes. Okay, they can be defined, but defining the database takes time and effort. So ensure that if you have to make a change, you have that database. Okay, which can be transportable. Redesigning database more difficult than rewriting the script. That 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 point I have already made. Now you are working in an organization, you, you, you go there and it may so happen in many cases that they have a standard database for, for reasons of their own and every application has to follow that, their database. 
Now what I am suggesting is that you keep in mind of a database other than that main standard database. You have to think about it uh, that maybe tomorrow if certain scenario occurs, what would be the second database other than the standard one. So look ahead. Now uh, web authoring tools, uh, you have to look at the package also which is offered, which can be offered by your uh, ISP. But one thing is for, is for sure that it is kind of a reverse of what we have discussed before because the output, the outcome of a web authoring tool, it can be a text editor, it could be WordPress or it could be other application or tool is HTML. Now HTML is a standard, okay, so all those web authoring tools will produce HTML which is going to be hosted, which will be running on your web server. And remember that there in an organization itself, there will be a diversity in the browsers used by the same people in an organization. They can be different browsers and even there can be a difference in the version of the browsers. So you have to be, uh, when, when we discussed uh, JavaScript in the prior module, I mentioned that people may have enabled it or disabled it and what are the browsers they are supporting it or not. So you have to take all of this into consideration. Authoring tool produce the same material, okay. So uh, it may be feasible, it may be economical that instead of buying an authoring tool, investing in an authoring tool, okay, and learning it, you engage people who develop that website for you. Now finally, uh, the file transfer protocol, you have to upload your scripts, your data, your tables into your uh, web website for which you need, uh, need a certain tool which is the FTP, the five, uh, file transfer pro protocol to update, populate your website. Now there are certain limitations of the integrated FTP which comes with your package because that may not allow you to selectively place the data to populate certain things. It may only allow you to upload files in a certain directory, in a certain location. That is a big limitation because you have to uh, have a hierarchy of file structures, of directory structures, where you upload your data and material for a number of reasons, which we'll be discussing in the subsequent modules also. So this integrated files, uh, FTP have these limitations. And uh, because uh, they will intuitively load, uh, so you have to be working, if it's a simple website, it's fine. You intuitively load into a certain file uh, direct, direct, directory structure and not beyond that. Now finally, uh, email may not come as a default. However, certain organizations, uh, certain ISPs or certain database service providers uh, offer email, which is domain specific. Uh, that domain could be of that ISP, which I strongly uh, recommend not to use. Use your own domain or sometimes they may offer a domain of a third party for your email, which again is a problem. In my experience, it was not working with that certain ISP. And so you have to uh, go take uh, additional step with regard to that email and that email may not come bundled and uh, there is automated email also. Something happens, you get an email. So there has to be a filtering mechanism of working with those emails so that they go into certain folders of your hosting solution. So that is all I have for this module. Thank you very much.